Whether it's a giant reclaimer or a starter ship, losing your ship in today's version of Star Citizen really doesn't matter that much beyond losing some time at an ASOP terminal waiting for your insurance claim. What really matters today instead is what you were wearing and what cargo you might have had inside your ship. But that ship? And eh, no worries, you'll get it back in a second for no charge. But not for much longer or so it would seem. You see, if you were one of the people who caught a little community-run Star Citizen event in Germany called Con42 last weekend, you might have heard about a big change coming very soon to ship components and ship insurance that's going to make losing a ship quite a bit more painful than it is today. And I'm going to tell you all about it in this video. And if you think I did a good job by the end and you think I deserve it, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button to show your support. So as a quick refresher for those of you who don't currently play Star Citizen or follow it closely enough to know, the way that Star Citizen works at present is that with ships that you purchase, you automatically get insurance for them, which replaces it on destruction. Reclaiming a destroyed ship is pretty easy. You just go to an ASOP terminal in a spaceport or space station and select the ship that you want to reclaim. You can either pay a fee to have it expedited or you can wait to get it back for free. The time and fee scales with ship size, so a starter has hardly any wait time and a tiny fee for expediting it to immediately get it back, whereas a big ship like a Reclaimer or 890 Jump requires up to 50 minutes for a free reclaim and a much larger fee to cut that time down considerably. The insurance covers the ship along with any components and weapons attached to it, but not anything that you had in your cargo or anything on your person. The insurance also takes into account any non-standard upgrades like better ship weapons or components so that you can get those back with the reclaim. The effect is that ships, especially smaller ones, don't really have very much value in and of themselves. The only pain a player really feels when they die is with what they were wearing or what they were carrying in their cargo. And this tends to make it so that player activities involving cargo or needing FPS gear like bunker running or jump town events require that person take on a lot more risk than other activities. Those less risky activities include things like PvE and PvP, so long as you're not wearing anything valuable, because losing your ship will only cost you a few minutes or so. The result is that when pirates take on cargo runners or salvagers or miners, the person who takes on the most risk is in reality the person who's being attacked. Prison, sadly, isn't too much of a deterrent, especially if you bring down the local comare, which basically records crime, so if you kill someone with that down, it doesn't count. Which brings us to now the information that we got that I hinted to at the beginning of this video from an event in Germany called Con42, which flew mostly under the radar. Attendance was actually really impressive and no doubt it was due to the very high quality hosting and the amazing question and answer panel with three very big people over at CIG, the developers behind Star Citizen. They hosted Yogi Klatt, Senior Gameplay Programmer, Dan Truffin, the Assistant Design Director for the Persistent Universe, and Thorsten Lehman, Lead Systems Designer for CIG. These guys are the ones that are in the weeds doing the work and know the plan for Star Citizen, so when they talk about it, they have a lot of authority. They talked about Star Citizen's future and answered a lot of questions about things coming relatively soon, which is what really caught my attention, especially the questions surrounding the next patch 319 with the feature of being able to remove, replace, and loot items and components from ships. And that's what I wanted to focus on in this video. That's what prompted me to want to even make it. See, somebody asked if CIG had any plans to prevent component value inflation from occurring on account of them being able to be salvaged from NPC ships, as they'll now have a value in the universe. The answer was quite interesting, as they went a bit beyond the question and explained further what they want to do with ship components, and that is to do exactly what they did with FPS equipment. That is to say, they want to remove some components completely from shop locations and make them only available through the loot pool through looting NPC ships and other player ships who have looted NPC ships. Dan Truffin also commented on top of this that their intention is to make some of the lootable items a great deal better than what you can find in stores, basically having a lot better attributes. Some other questions followed that that weren't really that related, but eventually someone in the audience circled back to it and asked what some, including myself, were wondering after that answer. And that is, will we then be able to insure those looted rare items along with the ships as they are now? And the answer 
was no. The plan is to make it so that those rare items found in the world cannot be insured as they are now. So not only will you not be able to purchase them, but you'll have to be really careful about using them because you can lose them. And this is what will make a massive difference for giving ships value, most especially in those activities that don't involve carrying valuable things. Perhaps now you understand a bit better why I spent so much time in the beginning of this video explaining the current state of Star Citizen. So let me explain then how this is going to change the game. On its surface, I'm sure many of you are looking at this with dread, as it's yet another pain you'll have to suffer through on a ship's explosion. After all, some of you may recall that there was once a time where components were not insured through ship insurance, which resulted in you losing components when you died. While in theory it was a good idea, it was hated by almost everyone as ship-related bugs causing random explosions were a lot more prevalent than they are today. I know that sounds crazy because they still happen, but trust me, it was worse. However, some important context you should know about that time is that ship components were not retrievable. Also, there were no physical cargo boxes, so really, all activities equally suffered under this system with losing everything when you died. When a ship exploded, nothing was recoverable. Which is why everyone was happy when they changed it to just including any component that you attached to your ship. Basically, if you customize your ship, it will remember it and you would get that back with insurance. Things today though, following 319 especially, will be very different than they were back then. Not only are random ship explosions less common, I know they still happen, but they're less common, but cargo can now be retrieved from ships that explode, including player gear, and soon components will be lootable and retrievable, which are very valuable. Hundreds of thousands of UEC can be looted from a ship just in components alone. Additionally with this system, unlike before, you can now return to the site of your death and recover anything you lost, so long as you have time to get back there. On the flip side though, it also means that there's more reward than ever for looting disabled and destroyed ships. This under the current regime will have the effect of creating an imbalance where attacking players have to put up very little to risk for a pretty substantial reward. Put simply, players who attack ships with valuable cargo or loot won't have to risk much of anything but their time. And this kind of already happens if you notice a lot of PvP players only wear the white suit that they get for free when they die, risking virtually nothing in the process. However, with this change of making components no longer insurable if they're really good, means that attacking players will now have to risk their expensive components worth hundreds of thousands of UEC in order to attack a player target with valuable loot. And the reason why this will affect PvP pilots more than PvE pilots is to do with the components and insurance. Here's what I'm talking about. We can be certain that the insurance will still cover the base level components that you get with a ship, as it would be unreasonable to expect a ship to come with an unflyable state. I mean, you don't get a car with an insurance claim without an engine, you get something that works. Thing is though, that while these base level components serve well enough in a fight against NPCs, they fall far short when putting them up against players where a few seconds of shields or extra damage points can decide a fight. That's why PvP players will look to fly with top shelf components as much as they do now. The result in this system will be that PvP players will stand to lose a lot more in combat if they want to fly with meta gear and stand a chance. Thus, with this new system, it will serve to rebalance activities across the board. Now, even if you fly naked, you're still going to be risking something with your ship. The result is going to be a far more cautious player base, Additionally, depending on how they work insurance, it will likely also mean fewer people ramming ships into things on purpose for an unfair advantage. It may also even mean fewer people leaving ships out when logging off, encouraging them to log out inside a bed or park it at a station to prevent it from being lost while they're offline. Or kind of like stripped of all its stuff, like a car put on cinder blocks and stripped of its wheels. And I suspect it will have more of an impact than even what I've said here, and I invite you to share what you're thinking down below. However, there are some problems and things that I'm not completely sure on, and that's with how insurance will work in specifics. I know that they're probably going to cover all of the base components that you get, but what I want to understand is what other things it might cover. What I'm hoping to see is that insurance will cover anything you buy in a shop, 
up to like say mid-range gear, but the really powerful stuff that you find in loot tables, like the top tier meta stuff for PvP, will be the stuff that you can't insure. Ultimately, I think that things being completely uninsurable may be a little bit too hardcore for people, so I hope that they go somewhere in the middle where some simple stuff can be insured, but really good stuff will be lost, meaning that you're going to have to risk it if you want to win. But I concede that just even having mid-range gear be insurable might be too unbalanced still. But what do you guys think? Are you excited for this change and do you agree? Do you see it as I do as bringing balance to the risk that some activities have versus others? Or perhaps are you just worried that bugs will make the downsides outweigh the benefits for now? Let me know down below, and I hope to see you guys in the next one.